Hey folks, this video is going to cover the second part of the animation pipeline. So in the previous video we talked about how to get your Storyboard Pro stuff into a bunch of separate files in Harmony. So you can kind of see we have a bunch of layers and those layers correspond to what we had in Harmony. Notice we've got our audio as well. I have the sound turned off right now because I really don't want to hear it, but um, it's not really necessary. This video is going to cover how we build a bunch of the stuff. Okay, so let me just scoot that camera node and that peg out of the way. Don't really need that. I'm going to select all these nodes and hit this button to organize them. So let's align those nodes. And then I think we're good. Now if I want to, I can go and name these as well, but not really necessary. Um, I just want to go and build this coffee mug right now and we'll we'll motion tween it as well. Okay, so let me hit the plus sign and I'm gonna title this one the coffee mug. And let me add and close. What I'm gonna do is take that coffee mug and where did it go? It's right over here. I'm gonna take that and let me move it all the way to the front. It'd be a lot easier if I just go in the node view and do this. Okay, so there's my coffee mug. And if I want to, let me just scoot these over to the side. Um, in fact, you know what? Let me put these into a backdrop so I don't have to worry about them. So I'm going to select all these. This little hamburger menu. I'm going to insert a backdrop. And there we go. There's my storyboard. Let's just get you out of the way. All right. I'm going to turn on the light table now. And I can use a bunch of tools in order to do this. It doesn't really matter. So uh, let me just use this. Let me use a black vector line. And I'm going to just kind of click, click right there. And I'm noticing that um, the line weight is a little too thin. So let me go and select this. And I'm going to increase my line weight just a bit. And that looks pretty good. OK, let me go contour editor. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to hold shift and see if I can stretch this out. It's being a little stubborn tonight. Okay, I'm going to click on each of the anchor points. Let me just kind of click and drag those out as well. And I think we're good. Okay, let me go and I'm going to get another one. It's another. It's my line weight. I think I need to go for about a 20. Okay, yeah. Okay, let me just go select all these, delete them again, I'll start again. Okay, so here's my anchor point. I'm gonna go to that contour editor tool, and there we go. I'm gonna take this, control C, actually uh, copy, and then I'm gonna paste. Let me go and move this thing over to the right. And then I can also flip this backwards. And I don't really want to go and try to draw every single line and make it perfect, especially if I could save a lot of time doing some of this type of work. Okay. Here's my next one. Let's go and drag that as well. Let me go right here. By the way, um, in case you hadn't noticed, I'm, I'm working from a remote application software. So what's happening is, is I can't really use the commands on my Mac to be able to really control and use shortcuts. So I'm just doing the best that I can. I've got to kind of click everything or do everything via long form and go into the menus. So it's a little frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, so I'm gonna just take these anchor points. Let's move them over here. Click, move that down there. And I'm getting close. So click, click. Let's go and bring this line outwards. And all I'm trying to do is trying to use these anchor points in a way to kind of build this thing because I know this mug is not going to really move. It's just going to kind of like have a motion tween animation and that's kind of it. So I'm not too worried about it doing anything. I just want it to be perfect. Okay. So I'm going to move that over there. Let's go back to this tool. And move these anchor points. You can either hold shift um, or not, it doesn't really matter uh, because they both have some options with what they can do. Um, 
Sometimes I like to hold shift so that way the anchor points stay put. Sometimes they don't. It doesn't really matter. All right. So now that I have that set up, I'm going to go underneath this tool, underneath the move tool, and I'm going to select the cutter. So let me just kind of zoom in just a little bit. Cutter's really nice because you could just swipe, 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 and it will slice off the pieces you don't want. Don't worry, you're, uh, you may start to see like, oh, there are these little rough edges and things like that. It's an easy fix. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my selection tool now that I have the cutter, um, I've done all my cutting. And what I wanna do is to select that line work. In the tool properties, I'm just gonna scroll down to the end and I wanna make, I wanna make those edges nice and rounded. So, where are you? Okay, so here are the ends. So let me go for a nice round end right there. And, and let me just zoom in so you could actually see what's happening before I do that last one. So I'm just gonna kind of zoom in. You can see there's a nice sharp edge right there. Um, so if I go to the start point and I go for a rounded edge, then it's nice and round. So what it does is it gets rid of those, those little caps um, those little sharp edges, uh, so they look nice. Okay, so now that's kind of done. Um, you know what? Let me just go and let me go to the paint bucket tool. Let me take this and I'm going to change it into like a nice turquoise mug. Click OK and I'm going to click. And there we go. We got a nice, nice blue mug. If I go and hide that first layer, then you can kind of see like, oh, okay. Um, this worked out nicely. There's my little coffee mug. Um, I'm noticing that there's some other little areas right there that I have to go back in and fix. Again, not a big deal. Just kind of go and select all of those pieces. And then what you can do is in your tool properties, you can just go fix those ends and just round them off just a bit. Easy peasy. And I think I've got maybe one or two more. So yeah, let's go get this last one as well. Select and there we go. We're gonna round that out. So now that I've used that, I've, I've shown you how to use the cutter. I've shown you how to use the contour editor um, with how you stretch and shape those lines. Let me show you one other little thing. Okay, so if you use this polyline tool to go and make your cleanup animation artwork, there is a thing called the pencil editor. So what you do is you click on any line that you created with the pencil editor and then you have multiple anchor points. So you've got four anchor points for this one line. You can go and kind of stretch the line work and to get some nice thick and thin line work with how you go and you create these um, these little little bevels and lines that go across your, your actual artwork. Um, it looks really sharp. It's a nice, I don't know, there's just something nice about this thin that goes to thick and then thin again. It just looks really pretty. Let's go and do something like that again. I'm going to go and select this line now. So maybe what I'll do is I'm going to bring this in just a nudge, stretch this out just a bit, bring this in, and it has a nice sharp tapered look to it. Uh, be careful though when you use the cutter, sometimes you're going to have some issues with wh where stuff lines up. I'm going to go to this one. Let me bring this in so it's nice and sharp. And then I'm going to take this out so it has a nice thick handle. And it just looks real pretty. It has a sense of variation to the actual line work. Um, and it looks nice. Okay, so I could obviously go fix this other corner, but I'm running out of time. This video is getting pretty long. So let's just uh, let's go ahead and get the brush tool. Now that that's done, um, what I could do is go back um, to my coffee mug layer. Oops. Which, by the way, it looks like I, I put my coffee mug on the wrong layer. So again, you gotta be careful. You wanna make sure you, you put your stuff where it's supposed to be. So let me go back to my coffee mug. Let me paste that artwork. And here's all my other stuff. All right. So anyways, uh, let me go and put some kind of cutesy little face on this mug. Okay. Let me undo, undo. So here's my character. Again, there's a considerable delay, so it's really challenging to draw. 
Okay, so now that I've got that set up, I'm pretty much good in that I've got some kind of a, I've got a clean up piece of animation and this is what my coffee mug is gonna look like. So what I would do basically is I would just F5 this and then in the area where there's supposed to be some kind of motion tween animation, I can kind of, you know, if I want to, if you're smart, you're gonna put your stuff on a peg. So I'm gonna just take this thing, let me control P. That actually didn't work. Sorry, I'm on a Mac. Um, so go to my coffee mug, let me just add a peg. So there it is. I'm gonna center this peg by readjusting where this point is. Let me just put this dead center. And then what I can do now is I can go and transform it. So if I know that it's gonna be kind of tilted in this direction at this part of the animation, and then over here at this part of the animation, it's gonna be over there. Uh, what I could do is just go ahead and animate it. And I can kind of shift things over, use onion skin and do whatever I need to do. Um, and then kind of go back to this part right here. Let me adjust that as well. And then I'm gonna just move this thing over, which is again, really handy. Now, if I want to, I could go back and I can adjust the, the location. So if maybe I wanna give it a little bit more of a floaty type of an appearance. Let me just turn on onion skin and let me increase the sample quite a few times. And then maybe I'm just gonna kinda of nudge it down just a bit. Over here, I'm gonna maybe nudge it downwards just a bit. And then you can see like, oh, okay. It's gonna have like a little bit more movement that's a little different than what I had originally started. It's also nice because what I could do is, I know it's supposed to appear out of nowhere. So let me just kind of hide this artwork. Uh, let me hide my coffee mug real quick. Okay, so the clay mug, the piece of clay is supposed to start here. And then what happens is, is there's some kind of a poof and then it comes out of nowhere. So maybe what I'm gonna do is at this point, I'm gonna take this coffee mug again and let me just shrink it down to like absolutely nothing or something that's really tiny. And if I really zoom in, it's kind of hidden so I could just put the lump of clay behind it or if I want to, I could just have it, like at this point, this is where it's supposed to be. So if I want, I could just go and select all of these keyframes and I could just delete them. So that way the mug is not visible. And then at some point it appears, there it is. And then it's gonna just kind of zoom in and get a lot bigger. So it's really handy because, you know, you're only drawing the mug once. And then of course you use your, your pegs to do your motion tween animation. And then it kind of does the stuff that you wanted it to, okay? Now I can do one last thing, um, which is to create a brand new layer. And with that new layer, maybe I could just call this puff or cloud smoke or whatever I want. Let me just add and close. And if I hide the mug, then I can go and take this puff of smoke and I can move this somewhere else. So I'm gonna just put this puff of smoke. It should be behind the mug. So let me go and scoot this back over here in the node view and I think that's going to be right there. So let me just let me just kind of scrub through this animation. Okay, so it's supposed to poof right there. So maybe about one frame ahead of time, I can go and start drawing that puff of smoke, which should be on this layer. Okay. Next, I'm gonna go um, period, period, go a couple frames forward, and I can turn on my onion skin, just to be on the safe side. I should be down here. Okay, there's my onion skin. So let me continue with this puff smoke. Period, period. And I'm just gonna do my rough animation. And you can kind of see the original drawing that I have from the storyboard. It's starting to emerge underneath, but it's okay. 
because now I'm in a situation where I know where the actual coffee mug is going to be so I can just go back and animate that however I want. Remember when we animate it's a good idea when you hand draw these try to do every other drawing because you don't really need to draw 24 pictures a second when most people they recognize the animation really nicely with just 12 drawings. Okay, so just kind of do this thing, do this big puff of smoke, and so on and so forth. And that's kind of it, you know. At the at this point, what I would do is just go through, get all my layers of animation, go hide the stuff that I don't want to see, and then I would just kind of scrub through the animation and make sure it looks the way I wanted it to. All right, guys. Well, I hope that was a helpful video. Um, that's kind of it. All I would have to do at this point is just make sure the animation's good, export it, and then somehow edit it into my animatic or my final animation. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.